coffee is what we're looking for <laughs> from about <laughs> eight in the morning. There's like coffee. there's no, there is. Yeah. Seriously. Nobody offered you. Any. No. <laughs> okay. We we are dying for coffee. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> Eva, <laughs> terrible. It's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when we finish, we want coffee. Okay, so <laughs> Okay, we can sound right. Um, you always seem to me like this um, classy, uh, but passionate, but calm uh, person. And you're not the party animal uh, in the band. Do you ever go crazy? I mean, seriously crazy. What type of person are you? I'm really boring. I am. Me and my makeup artist, we like to be in our pajamas straight after the show, have a face mask on, tell everyone that they should have their eight hours sleep, but instead they don't listen to us and they get drunk on the bus. Maybe we'll have a midnight snack if we're feeling crazy. We are very boring. Um, I, I've partied before. I, yeah, don't that, to, I don't need to party anymore. Like I, I, I did my partying at university and at festivals, so now, you know, and festivals are a different thing now because I'm now, it's like work for me. So I can't have so much fun. Because I read that, for example, that, that you, uh, when you were dating with Sam, you went to drum and bass parties and things like that. And I thought maybe there is this kind of animal inside of you. Yeah, but I was 16 and I didn't have to sing the next day. So it was okay if like you sung at the top of your voice. Um, because you could just have a hoarse voice the next day. But now it's like, I have to be, I am quite precious about my voice, but like, I have to be so serious about it because, you know, um, I've been waiting to do this Polish show for the whole European dates, but I've had um, a bug, I've been on the drip, I've been doing promo, I've been like, but I've had to make sure that we get to this stage and, again next week when I'm working like it's it's you've got to look after yourself because I was thinking that maybe there is a, this kind of contrast uh, as far as your character is concerned that uh, you are this calm person uh, which makes this typically calm music uh, but maybe uh, in your private life you're more um, crazy um, no I'm really boring there too <laughs> Okay. Really, even more boring, I think. At least I can pretend to you lot that, like, you know, I'm a singer and, God, you know, we get up to crazy things on the tour bus and, no, I'm really boring. You're so, so disappointed, you're like, interviews over. Fuck. <laughs> now, um, about this contrast, because I, uh, I was always wondering what is it about white and black with Jess you wear? Because we usually see you in black and white. Black and white photos, black and white uh suits or whatever is there something about those colors that you especially admire about this contrasting i mean you got me on a, a black and white day but usually it's just I black know. um yeah i don't know i just like it and my, my wardrobe's very simple and i kind of don't do a lot of print and i don't know it's because when you look at the album covers when you look at the photo shoots it's usually black and white. Maybe you just don't notice that. No, I have a bit of control about <laughs> what I do. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the, how I like to present myself and that's how I feel confident. And wearing smart clothes, tailored clothes um, with kind of little color um, makes me feel the kind of strongest. So apart from my new video, Champagne Kisses is, is full of color, <laughs> which I'm like wearing mustard in it and blues and stuff, so yeah. When I listen to your music, I always get the feeling that it suits the night more than the day. Is there a little bit of, of, of darkness inside you maybe? Maybe that's where, where this kind of mood comes from? No, I don't think so. You're like, God, this is not going how I want it. I'm just trying to know what kind of person you are, no, really. I, like, I, uh, I like to make nighttime music. I think this album's slightly more daytime or like not late night, it's a bit early night, like girls going out or like at the party. Um, but yeah, I, I like 
I like nighttime music. I like to think that people could have sex to my music. I like to think people could have cocktails to it. Um, people could go home after a night out and dance and put it on. That's, well, that's one of the things I wanted to say next, that uh, I have a friend who actually told me when I said I'm going to speak to Jesse Ware, and I had great sex to Jesse Ware music recently. Brilliant. Is that the goal? Absolutely. <laughs> that must be weird for you now to no. no? No. What? Having sex to your music? No, I don't need to know that about your friend having sex to my music. No, we we speak about all those things. Okay. No. Great. Um I always, um, you know, as people, we are usually uh, built from uh, previous experiences, and uh, you have uh, you have some experiences uh, other than music than singing. Mm. Uh, you've been a journalist for some time. Uh, you've uh, studied English literature. How do those things, those experiences, uh, help you in any way now? How do you use them in your life, in your profession, as a singer, as an artist? I think I hopefully have a good work ethic. Like, I like to work hard. I respect when I'm doing interviews, however tired I may be and however much I may not particularly want to chat and put makeup on and chat about myself. I respect that people have jobs to do and I like to um, give them, like, the best possible chance to be able to write that article or have a good interview um i hopefully i think i learned something about kind of being concise with writing my you know my lyrics are never too kind of flowery they're quite straightforward and i think that was probably making a point quickly in uh, journalism you know like don't faff about so yeah would you ever consider uh writing Um, lyrics that are not about love in general yeah what would they be um i don't know i mean i guess wildest moments isn't i mean it's it's not about love it's about friendship a little bit i But don't say uh, love in it once I don't think. other topics than uh, the relationships uh, between people i uh i guess that's what interests me that's what kind of makes me tick I could write some I don't know what else I'd write about yeah I mean it may not necessarily be love but I think it's always got to be some kind of relationship maybe or or s somebody included in whatever journey you're going on or whatever I don't know somebody counted that it's I think your 10th show in Poland, including all those little ones that, that you did on the way. What, did, what do you think, what is, what is it about Poland and Jesse Ware that, that simply keeps, keeps you coming here? Well, they keep on supporting me and so I have so much time for them. And uh, it's, you know, one of my most successful countries to play in. This is my, this is big, this venue is bigger than the venue that I played in London. Um, it's a massive deal for me to be able to perform um, in Poland and to still have the support from album one into album two. Like, they haven't gone away. They've got bigger and that's really reassuring for me and they've been so kind to me and supportive. But you admire Poland because I saw an interview uh, before a show somewhere in England, I think you did, and you chose a Polish venue even for that show. I remember it was called Warsaw. It was in uh, Brooklyn. Oh, it was in Brooklyn. Sorry. So, but you you chose it, and you said that uh, you want to eat more pierogies. Yeah. So it's it's more than just Poland supporting you. I think you give the love back. I like to think so. Like I think it's a good relationship that we've got, and um, I talk about Poland a lot and um, I do love pierogies. I'm going to go and have them in a minute, actually. <laughs> Just after we have coffee. Yeah. <laughs>